You're probably familiar with photosynthesis, the process by which plants, algae, and other related organisms use light energy to convert carbon dioxide and water into sugars and oxygen. This incredibly important, multi-stage process is not only responsible for providing most of the energy necessary for life on Earth, but also for maintaining the oxygen in our atmosphere. Now, using the high-energy X-ray laser pulses produced by SLAC National Accelerator Laboratory's LINAC Coherent Light Source, scientists at Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory, in collaboration with scientists at SLAC and Stanford University, and collaborators in Germany, Sweden, and the UK, have developed a powerful new way to study exactly how photosynthesis produces the oxygen that we breathe. These researchers have taken extremely high-resolution images at different stages of the process at room temperature, allowing them to search for how and where the oxygen is produced under real-life circumstances. The researchers specifically studied the protein complex Photosystem 2, which produces oxygen from water in a small region of the protein during photosynthesis. First, room temperature crystals of the protein were introduced as either a liquid jet or as tiny drops made using sound waves on a moving tape. As the crystals moved forward, they were hit with pulses of visible light, which triggered different stages of the photosynthetic process depending on the number and timing of the pulses. Finally, the drops were hit by powerful X-ray pulses from the LCLS. By looking at how the X-ray light scattered onto two different kinds of detectors, the researchers were able to obtain extremely high-resolution structures of the oxygen-producing region of the protein, giving them new insights into where the bond between oxygen atoms might form from two water molecules, and where it might not. Specifically, by watching where ammonia molecules, which are analogs of water molecules, bonded to the region, they were able to rule out some possible locations where the oxygen bond might form. If the ammonia bonded to a location and oxygen was still produced, then that site was not a likely location for water or the formation of oxygen. Using this and related data, the researchers were specifically able to raise questions about two of the most popular locations, demonstrating just how powerful this technique can be. While they haven't found the answer yet, the researchers hope that by continuing to improve this process and gathering more and more data at different stages of photosynthesis, they can gradually zero in on the exact way that oxygen is produced from water within Photosystem 2. Understanding how this system works could lead to a revolution in the development of artificial photosynthesis, solar fuels, and more. But most importantly, it could finally help us understand the atomic origins of the oxygen in the air we breathe every day.